Osteoporosis is a global health problem and it affects about 200 million people around the world. And the CDC shows that about 5% of men and about 20% of women over the age of 50 suffer from this condition. And studies show that for some people over the age of 50, they can lose about 1% of their bone mineral density every year in their hip and spine. In this medical condition where people have osteoporosis and the bones are weaker, there's a higher risk for people to develop a fracture. And some of the more common osteoporotic fractures could be the shoulder, the wrist, and the spine. Screening is important to help identify people who are at risk and also allows people to start uh, implementing a plan and treatment plan such as medications for some people. Some people will do vitamins like calcium and vitamin D. And then what I'm going to talk about in this video is the implementation of exercise as also one measure to help prevent and treat osteoporosis. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York City. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. Being physically active is very important for bone health. And so people who are physically active, they have less bone loss and people who are sedentary have much higher bone loss. And there was a study that looked at about 827 women and they found that those who were physically inactive lost about one and a half percent more bone mineral density every year compared to those women who were physically active. In addition, Building strength or having greater muscle strength has been shown to be protective against osteoporosis and bone loss. And there was an interesting study that looked at people who were taking calcium supplements and also looked at their muscle strength. And this was a study of about 1,700 elderly men and women, and they showed that bone mineral density at the hip uh, amongst those who had stronger uh, muscle strength and were taking calcium was 5% greater than those who were taking calcium but had weak muscle strength. So this shows the importance of maintaining strong muscles. What happens over time as people get older if their muscle strength declines, if it stays the same, or if it increases? What impact does that have on our bone strength and on our bone mineral density? And there was a study that looked at this and they found that for those people who reduce their strength over time, they had a greater loss of bone mineral density. And so in this study, there was about 622 uh, postmenopausal women. And they found that women who had improved their strength had a significantly lower bone loss in their hip and in their spine over the course of 10 years. Well, what is the mechanism? How does it work? Why does exercise and physical activity improve the bone health? And so here it's interesting. As we put a stress or a load on the bone, which is performed by our muscles, that triggers the bone to make more bone. So you can understand that if we are more physically active and we build more strength, so we have bigger, stronger muscles, this will put more load on the bone, helping it maintain its bone quality, bone strength, and bone mineral density. Now, evidence for this can be seen in our blood through markers that indicate what's going on with our bone health. For example, there was a study that took uh, women who were postmenopausal and they put them in an exercise program. There was about 45 minutes in duration, about 15 minutes was aerobic exercise, about 30 minutes were resistant training and weight bearing exercises. And these people were doing this about twice a week for three months. And what they found was that there was an increase in the markers of these proteins in the blood that indicated buildup in bone formation. And they also found no increase in the markers of bone resorption or breakdown. So that was very encouraging what they found after exercise. So we can see from these studies evidence in blood markers that exercise does improve the health of bone. In addition to the mechanical loading and benefits of exercise on bone in the pathway we just discussed, studies also showed that uh, muscle cells also naturally secrete factors that improve the health of bone cells. So what kind of exercise do we need to do that's going to promote bone health? And so studies have looked at different types of exercise. And what it comes down to is that resistance exercise, building up muscle strength, and impact activities, maybe like jumping or running, are both very good at improving bone health. And there was a meta-analysis of about 5,000 people, and it actually did demonstrate that a combination of both probably works best for, let's say, the lumbar spine, but each one of these different exercises, either alone, just muscle strengthening exercises, uh, or impact activities, or the combination, each of those did have a positive effect. 
Uh, multiple other meta-analyses have also backed up and corroborated these findings. And for example, one of these studies or analyses, and this was one of about 4,000 people, found that those who were engaged in a combination of the exercise that we just discussed, on average, had about 3% less bone loss than those who did not exercise. What is the optimal intensity? High, moderate, low intensity exercise. What about the frequency? Should we work out once a week, five times a week, twice a week? What's the right number? And then what's the right dose? Meaning how many minutes per week should we be working out? Is it 150 minutes a week? Is it 300? Is it 50? What are the correct numbers that we need to do to at least meet a minimum that will get those benefits? Findings from multiple meta-analyses have shown that higher intensity exercise is much better at promoting bone health than moderate or light intensity. Another study of about 100 postmenopausal women with either osteoporosis or osteopenia, those people were randomized to either a supervised high intensity exercise program that they were doing exercises twice a week, 30 minute sessions for eight months, or they were randomized to a control group that was doing very light intensity exercise. And what they found was that for the lumbar spine, only about 20% of the patients in the high intensity group had a reduction in their bone mineral density compared to 70% of people who were doing light intensity exercise who had a reduction in their bone density of their spine. So that's a big difference, 20% versus 70% of people having a reduction in their bone density. And for the hip, 30% of people in the high intensity group had a reduction in their bone density versus double that, 60% of those people who were doing just light intensity. So here we can see the real importance of doing more high intensity exercise. It really creates a better benefit in terms of bone health and bone density. So now let's discuss dose. How many minutes a week do we need to be exercising? So here again, there's another study that looked at this, and this was one of about 400 postmenopausal women. And they found that those people who were doing on average more than 85 minutes per week of impact exercise over the course of about a year had much higher levels of bone density at the year follow-up compared to those who were doing less than 43 minutes per week. Now lastly, how many days a week do we need to exercise? So here again, another meta-analysis, 17 studies looked at this, and it looks like you need to exercise at least twice a week at a minimum to get the best benefit. And so it's interesting, so what they had recommended in this meta-analysis was that you should try to schedule three times a week because things come up in life like holidays, just other appointments. And so if you schedule three times a week, you'll end up at about two times a week, and that's the recommended amount. Now, many older adults are taking some form of medication like anti-resorption agent or hormone therapy in order to help combat osteoporosis. And some people wonder, well, what role does exercise play? Do I even need to do exercise if I'm already on medication? And so the answer is yes, exercise has a great added benefit in these patients. So for example, there was a meta-analysis of seven randomized controlled trials with 420 subjects, and they compared the effects on bone from those who were on these anti-resorptive agents uh, alone, or they were on these medications plus doing exercise, and they found that those patients who were on the combined exercise and the medication anti-resorptive agents had a significantly greater increase in lumbar spine bone density compared to those who were only taking medication uh, without also doing the exercise. But what about safety? Is it safe for older people who have osteoporosis, osteopenia, to be doing high intensity exercise? And so the good news is many of the studies that I've already discussed in this a video have actually looked at that as well, many of these meta-analyses and studies, and they have found that overwhelmingly it's been very safe. The most common side effects in some people have been some muscle soreness, but the vast majority have shown that there was no significant injuries going on. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. Number one, as people age, their bone strength and bone mineral density decreases. Number two, physical inactivity and muscle weakness increases the risk of osteoporosis. Number three, doing resistance exercise for muscle strength and impact activities like jumping or running improves bone health and reduces the risk of bone loss and bone weakening. Number four, doing a combination of resistant exercise and impact exercise seems to have the best outcome for bone health. 
Number five, for those people who are taking anti-resorptive medications for their bones, adding exercise has an added benefit. And finally, number six, there is a good safety profile for doing exercise in older people with osteoporosis. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.